All right. We are at Help of Vet Shine 2021. It's freaking Jeep Squad. Sans banner. Sans banner. Sans t-shirts. We're, we're professionals here. We know what we're doing. Well, I mean, this is our first event. We don't even have 150 subscribers yet. So this is just a, you know, a Deb um, just is, is very generous and was like, hey, why don't you guys have a booth? And we're like, okay, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. So we're, we're here. here. Shout out to Deb. Yeah. That's great. Little Love little that. rampage off road. <laughs> yeah, there's there's the ruck rack folks. There's all of FMC. It's Elderton over there. Yeah. You know what we should do in the description box we'll, we'll just list everybody. Yeah. Everybody. You wanna check everyone out? So go yeah. Alright. Gotta go get outpost food. Yeah, we need food. It's, it's too we'll be back. Right. Updated right here at the front and center. So they will not miss any of this this action this hot cheap squad action our hot action is unavoidable Woo! i ducked myself 1104 we've got stickers ducks hot wheels cars raise energy bag we uh realized that we should totally have a banner because there's nothing to identify us <laughs> looks just like green jeep an alien boy but been slow so far, which is good. You got anything else to say so far? Um, yes, and that is when you see this video, you definitely just should have come and said hi. Or if you did say hi, thank you for coming and saying hi. And if you guys have any good ideas as to who can make banners in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, we're gonna talk to Pepe. All right, I take it back. We're gonna talk to Pepe. Yeah. Support little rampage off road. Thank them for putting and on the, the event and Zoo Crew. So basically, how a Help of Vet Shine started was literally I was at Mike Keith, which is True Patriots event in June, um, and I wanted to give back. I wanted to do something. I've never fit in. I didn't know where I belonged. And Stacy from Offer Outreach was out there. But there was somebody there that touched my heart, and that's Stephanie, that's Nick Knight. And that she was hitting her most grievous point of losing her son. And I was like, you gotta take your grief and turn it around positive. And where I had hit rock bottom myself, and I was struggling to find my way, here I go, I'm gonna try to find raffle prizes. Summit Racing sends me the show and shine pack. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So I just rolled with it. Started in Asheboro. I donated to three charities at that time. Um, and we, ra we raised close to $1,000. So then it was, if I can do this, watch me next year. I don't know what I'm doing. And so it just slowly, you know, the homemade trophies were very important to people. And the, the more I met veterans, the more it saved my life because I learned I wasn't the only one that had demons and I learned it was okay that inside here and here we are different even though here we put on a face and so my thing was is I was a Cherokee and I always struggled because I was always chasing the big dogs you know I was like hey look out my Cherokee's coming for you and so as my build came I got to know more veterans and that's how the help of that shine got bigger and bigger. And this year we rocked the house. I think we were between 500 and 800 people out there this year. So, and we raised over, oh well, after you put uh, Jonathan's money in there, we've raised over $6,000. And something everybody needs to know, everybody says they take off the top and pay. We did not take off the top like that. We only took the 700 to cover the shirts in the band that we had to shell out. We did not walk money back. We did this because that's our contribution. Because we want Help a Vet Shine to do so many things and help so many people. So I think we succeeded in that. I mean, you gotta think we gotta bring 22 down. So you gotta think if you got a veteran over here that's struggling and you got a guy over here that doesn't understand, they start talking, they become friends. And whammo, he's got a support team, or she has a support team. So, you know, that gives us that, and you have people like Stephanie out there that's 100% 
experience that 22. And so to see Stephanie, to know somebody within your own round, you know, we lost David Walker just a few months ago, and he was in the Willing community. Awesome, awesome guy. You know, so when you start bringing it to people's attention, guys, this don't just happen out here. This happens here. These people, and if y'all will notice, we made sure David Cash got an extra little bonus, but we made sure Jason gave it to him. And the reason why is Jason and David both have their share of demons. They both have their struggles. But Jason, he has a little more of a sport team and everything like that because he's got Aaron. And I mean, we all know how badass she is and that this is his rock and all. But he has a little better, you know, financially with his rig and stuff like that. He's got better means. So that's the reason I wanted Jason to present it to Cash because Cash struggles mm -hmm. and his demons play harder on him so he's not able to do as much. So you take one veteran that, yes, yeah, got demons, that has it, but they have a little bit better to help a brother out. That shows we're all equal. And that shows it doesn't matter who's who, what's what, we're all in this together. So we were able to do little things like that to make sure. And that was 100% digit. They surprised me with that. Greg Adams off a of digit, you know, he's different like the rest of us. But I mean, he was able to get that and do that personally for a bit. And that just shows you this event, we brought somebody else in, you know, and you can tell, he's screamo music. Not many of us are screamo or nothing like that. He doesn't get to wheel with us much, but we brought somebody else into the community that respected our veterans. He's a little bit different, just like the rest of us, but he respected and he honored our vets. And that's what this was all going towards, is everybody just coming together, making sure these vets were thanked, and we just kept on and kept on and just got bigger. The way Rampage got started and the way it got its name is all going back to the community. <laughs> and I was running, it's a Jeep Nation in North Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, which is from the Texas club and all of that. Um, everybody told me to start my own club and we all know I'm bossy and I'm a headache, but uh, <laughs> literally we came, my son was like, mom, you know, your last name is bare, like bare skin. Let's do something like that. We could never, we could not. I mean, I posted it on Facebook, could never come up with a name. And I have a friend of mine whose kid goes back in age. So they revert him back and they play the game Rampage. Mm -hmm. And I remind them of the game. <laughs> and so that's where Rampage come from. Uh, L-I-L is because I'm always the shortest the smallest and the loudest out of everybody so I get called Little D a lot so that's where Little Rampage come from and it's an off-road club but we wanted to be an off-road club we didn't want to be a Jeep club because the worst thing is is when somebody tells you their soul is filled with so much hatred if I saw a black man sitting on the trail I'd leave him there to die I was so sick of the hate but my son is gay and he could not come out until after he went to Greensboro because up here in the country, it's like a no-no. So I was so sick of the hate and the surrogation and stuff like that. I wanted to be an off-road club. I didn't care what type four by four you had. I just wanted this all together. I wanted this all. And that's where our trail feats come from. Because if you just sit down and say grace and eat together, you were family. I mean, what do we do at grandma's house when we was growing up? We all go to grandma's, we bring a little something, then we eat. Eating was what brought us together as a family. So that's how Rampage became this family club. And yes, I, I buck with people, I'm different, but I know what I want. I know how I want my club. I know how that little thing right there, he matters and he deserves respect. But you also got a four-year-old child here. That child deserves just as much respect also. And so that was the biggest thing with Rampage. I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want it where you couldn't bring your kids on a wheeling trip. He's good. He's fine. Okay. I didn't want it where you couldn't bring your kids on a wheeling trip. And I didn't want just an off-roading thing. I want us, we go roller skating, we go bowling, we go to movie. Yeah, that was, that was something I enjoy. And 
you can't wheel during the winter that much. So I still like to be around my family, so we do other things. And so Rampage is very small in numbers, but small numbers are mighty. When it comes to the event, it's people like Bo Rosa out of Triad, like Route 1 Sex, Brian Plummer. It's all of these people that are in our community that just say, hey, we need more of this. We need more of the little people saying, stand up. And so Rampage stood up. Robin, she gave me an honorable mention award one year, you know, because I was at rock bottom. I didn't know how to run a club. I turned it around. And Bo, Dave Peterman, Donnie Hall, you know, all of these people for three years. Don't make us regret, you know, putting our decal on your uh, hair. But if you'll listen to us, we'll lead you. They led, and I followed right in footstep, but my mouth was louder than most. And my loud mouth is what got us where we are. And that's the reason I push trade lightly. I push about our veterans. I push about helping. I mean, if you called me up and you say, hey, Dad, man, all I've got is bologna and cheese. The dog, I, I really need a bag of bones for the dog. Do you mind helping? Okay, here you go, you know, and that's what we want. We want people to understand if, you know, Liz has got a flat tire and she's two hours or 20 minutes away. I want her to know she can call me and even though I don't have license, I will get somebody there because we're united. We're a family. And that's, that's, that's the whole thing about Rampage. I never had family. I came from an alcoholic parent and abuse and all of that. I didn't have nobody give a flying crap. And so that's one of the reasons I'm kind of trail mama. I like to, people take it as I'm bossy and I'm not. I try just to take care of everybody. I try to do for everybody. Your dedication to the United States of America, its ideals, and its military is commendable. It is an honorable addition to the freedom you bravely fought and worked for, not only for families in America, but throughout the world. God bless America. God bless you. With the heartfelt gratitude, we want to say thank you. So we're going to have all of our veterans go on, but we got somebody else that we need to bring up here. Not only is Travis a couple of art, and there's several others out here, but there's a veteran out here that started this nonprofit. He misses meals with his family. He's out here on the road all the time. These little nonprofits is what helps everybody, is what's making us go more and more to help our best. So let's bring military missions in action up. And Mike's going to speak and then he's going to say a prayer and everybody can come and get cake. Well, the last thing I want is stand between a bunch of people, a short, fat, bald guy standing between a bunch of people and some cake. So we're going to try to make it really quick. I want to say thank you very much uh, for choosing us and for all the hard work that y'all put into this. It's been a phenomenal event and we can't do it alone. Just real quick, we modify about 60 homes a year for veterans with disabilities. We outfit about 125 homes a year for veterans who used to be homeless and the VA got into an apartment and when they got them into the apartment, all they had with them was what they had on the street. We also work with about 4,000 homeless vets in the state of North Carolina every year, giving them health and hygiene items, food, items that they need to survive on the street. In addition to that, we ship 8,500 care packages downrange for our troops so that they know that we haven't forgotten them. Number one morale booster of our troops is getting a care package from home. How many of this audience has ever got a care package from home? Yeah. It means a world of difference to receive that care package. And in our Operation Rescue Christmas program, we did 800 military children last year during the holidays for those junior military people that may need a little hand up during this. So let me say this. Thank you all. 93 cents of every dollar we bring in goes back out to what we do, but we could not do it with what y'all, without y'all support. It doesn't matter if we're young, old, rich, poor, Republican or Democrat. We all have a duty and responsibility for those men and women that have served our country. With that said, let us pray and then we'll eat cake. Bailey. 
Father, we come before you today to give thanks. Thanks for this incredible country that we live in. Thank you for the people that are here today that has made this event a success. Thank you for the veterans here that have paved the way so that we have our freedoms. Father, we also ask you to be with those 3,000 that deployed yesterday to Afghanistan to make sure that they're there, watch over them, bring them all home safely. Father, there's so many things in this world that we take for granted, and we just want you to know that we appreciate each and every blessing, and we would like for you to bless this nourishment of this day that is used to our bodies so that we may continue to do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. While well, y'all are getting cake, I do want to mount Y'all raise your hand. We're going to cake. Please cake. Thank you. 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 The second thing we do is we send them to camps. I know some of you guys have gone to a camp where you've been around other veterans and you know how much that helps you. That's the same thing with these kids, but these kids have it harder because guess what? They don't have a parent there to back them up, to say, hey, you can do this. The third thing we do is we help them get into college because not all these kids are our kids where they get that benefit. So we try to fill in those cracks to take care of those kids. Now. Do I have time to tell a story? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to tell a story and this is how this organization has allowed me to help these kids. Our third year we had a family come out. Um, her name was Casey. And she lost her parent due to a seizure while on active duty. Well, we had a long day of a go topless day just driving around. And she gets my Jeep, and my Jeep is not a very serious Jeep. It's got a, it's called Scallywag for crying out loud. It's, it's a pirate. And yes, it, it's a dirty son of a witch. But she's in the Jeep with me, we're, we're rolling on, and she starts talking to me. It's a very easy conversation. What's your favorite animal? I like wolves. What's your favorite animal? I like foxes. What's your favorite mystical creature? Oh, I like dragons. What's yours? I like dragons. Did you hear about my dad? He passed away. Now, after this day, it's hard to drive a Jeep doing 70 miles an hour and talk to a kid and not cry. And I can't tell the story about crying, so bear with me. So I, I tell a white lie. I say, your dad was called back to heaven to guard the gates so that we help you get up there. And she's like, well, what's so wrong with hell? I'm like, well, you don't want to go to hell, you get tortured. She's like, well, okay, I kind of get it. So then she's like, well, but if we're going to stop war, why don't we all just move to Antarctica? There's no war there. I know. I tried to explain that to her too. It's about 20 minutes. So this is right when Endgame came out with Marvel. And she's like, I don't understand this one part about a movie. And this is a spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen it. It's been years get on the beach. Thank you. Why did Tony Stark give up his life? And I told him, told her, I'm like, just like your daddy made that sacrifice, Tony Stark made that sacrifice for his kids. And again, I'm trying to tell this without crying. And I was trying not to cry during this whole Jeep ride. So she starts talking about something else, and then she's like, I got another question. I'm like, what is it? She's like, how come Hawkeye and uh, Black Widow fought over who was going to make the ultimate sacrifice? I'm like, well, Hawkeye didn't think he had a family to go back to. And Black Widow knew if she gave up that, that her life, there's a chance the family comes back. And she's like, okay, I get it. I'm like, so if you think about it, they're both heroes, just like your dad. So we get to uh, Walmart, and all the kids go in to go to the bathroom. They all come back out. They all give me a hug, and Casey gives me this big old bear hug. Won't let go. And she's like, Mr. Tim, promise me I get to see you again. Casey, I promise you're going to see me again. She's like, no, promise me I get to see you again. So I go home, and I go to sleep, and I wake up crying. Because I realized her dad made that same promise and he didn't get to keep that promise. But I have kept that promise to her. I've seen her a hundred times. I get to Marco Polo every day. And this is what I get to do to help the kids. This is what, if you guys come to my event in March, you guys get to help be part of it. So I want to thank all the veterans out here. 
you know, myself being green. I want to thank all of you guys for coming out to this. I want to thank you guys for supporting this. As was described to me, short, crazy lady with purple hair. I want to thank you guys. Okay, I wanted to make an announcement. I will tumble for you made our veterans cups. But in the house is more sense. And we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have this. We wouldn't be gathering on this field. So I think you need to step up. And I think everybody needs to give you a focus. Thank you. Yeah. Um, those of you that don't know me, my name is um, Mike Morrison. Uh, my wife and I, we run Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. Um, but there was a gentleman um, that used to be involved in URI for a long time. Um, and those of you that have been around for a few years now, you remember Scott Fields. Um, Scott Fields was my mentor uh, in the four-wheel drive training world, in the life world. Uh, also, you know, just in general, my walk um, as a Christian. So Scott Fields helped develop the trail system in the forest. He was involved with the Forest Service uh, in making sure that we were recreating correctly out there. He opened Juari Off-Road Training Center, uh, which was a four-wheel drive training school here on this property. This is where it started um, with the help of Chris Cagle from the El Dorado Outpost. Um, fast forward a few years after that, and the Forest Service approached him and said, hey, things are out of hand in the forest. Either we fix it or we shut the trails down. And Scott, you know, jumped right into the mix right there and his first thought process was we need tread lightly out here on the east coast so he held the first uh, master tread trainer uh, class out here on the east coast we've even got a couple of master tread trainers here like Bo Rosa over here um, and myself were part of that class and it changed a huge dynamic in how uh, people were out on the trails preserving our environment right so that we could have access to these public lands and um, Scott also felt like, and I think this is important to say today, uh, that the clubs were the answer, right? They were the answer to teach tread lightly. They were the answer to teach people how to recreate outdoors responsibly. And that's never been more true than today. Uh, this is my first time back to URI in a while. Um, and to see how the clubs have come to together to make this event happen today is huge. You know, Little Rampage, Triad Jeep Club, Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, um, and a ton of clubs I've never even heard of before. The Zoo Crew is a new one that I had not heard of. Um, but to see the clubs working together to make events like this happen, this was Scott's dream. Um, so on behalf of myself and Scott, because I know he's excited to be watching this right now, thank you clubs for making stuff like this happen and for bringing these groups together. And thank you, Deborah. Oh, if uh, anybody that is here today would like to um, pay homage to Scott at the American flag, there is a memorial to him. Um, and if you have a cool story, find us today. We'd love to talk about it for a little while. Um, but I'm also going to let, since Deb ran off, Bo Rosa talk a little bit about Southern Four Wheel Drive Association and Tread Lightly. Uh, I love how he just did that. Scott used to do that to me. Every event, he would turn around and be like, hey, by the way. All right, so my name is Bo. I'm the membership director of Southern Four Wheel Drive, and I'm a master tread trainer with Tread Lightly. Just like Mike said, um, it's up to the clubs to protect our trails. Southern Four Wheel Drive is an association of clubs and members. We, uh, our motto is conservation, education, and recreation. Concerns your trails learn about your trails, and then ride your trails. Tread Lightly follows the same same kind of principles, and they partner together. Tread Lightly has the acronym of TREAD. Travel responsibly, respect the rights of others, educate yourself, avoid sensitive areas, and do your part. So everybody out here is doing their part. 
Um, I encourage everybody to check out the Trend Lolly website to educate yourself. There's a lot of great things about what you can do on the trails, how to support your trails. Um, there's grants. You can get grants from Tread Lightly. You can get grants from Southern Four Wheel Drive. So if you see something on your trails that you need fixed, apply for those grants. Do your part. Get your club involved. Do the work days. We have work days here at Uari every third Saturday of the month where we maintain our trails. It's up to the clubs to maintain our trails. It saves us money when we have to hire contractors. Um, Anybody get anything? How about a close prayer? All right, let's pray. Father God, we come before you. We just thank you so much, not only for the, another day of life, but for each and every vet that is here, every volunteer, every vendor, and every spectator. We just pray your blessing upon them, guard our hearts, guide our minds. We pray that your blessing come upon us and our extended families as we travel, some close, some far. But we just pray that your presence always watch over us. Once again, we thank you so much, Lord, for these vets and for this free country that we have because of them. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all. A lot of y'all don't know me. I'm Roy Offenbacher, a.k.a. Papa Bear. Papa Bear! I'm with the RC community back here around the corner. A lot of y'all ain't found your way up that way. We should. We're grown ass men playing with toys. Just smaller toys than y'all's. <laughs> but anyway, I'm um, not just short and sweet. Everybody looks more out. On behalf of myself, Gray, Mike, Landon, and Pepe, I'd like to present something to Deborah Bear. Not only did she put this event together, but she brought the one-to-ones together with the RCs. And hopefully we can continue doing this. So, Deborah, this is yours.